I was born in Bitola, Macedonia. Macedonia now is an independent country, which is formerly Republic of Yugoslavia. It's right north of Greece. My town, Bitola, was about 20 miles from the Grecian border. At age 12, I was fortunate and blessed to be able to come to this country. Uh, my mother was unfortunately unable to come because her visa didn't come up at the same time as mine. Having been born an American citizen, I was able to come as a minor. I was considered an automatic citizen. So I came in January of 1951, and I had to wait for mother to come in uh, April of uh, 1951. In the meantime, Dad was uh, building a house on North Fifth and Aaron, and when she came, the house was ready for, it to, for us to move in. He was living with my uncle George, my mother's brother, and they both worked at Coney Island. My father was the owner of Coney Island at 411 Desert Street. He came in 1938 and married my mother. They tell me I was two months old when he left to wind up his business in America and come back and live in Macedonia. He had bought a beautiful two-story home that uh, is demolished now because there's a high-rise apartment there the last time I went there. The house that I grew up in there was not there. So he came back in 1939. In the meantime, the war started, World War II, and he was here and mother and I were there, unable to come together, whether it was there, whether it was here. So finally, after the war, Dad saw Paul Fink, a local attorney at that time, who was a good friend of Otto Passman, who was our congressman. And they started working on getting the passports. And ultimately, we, we, we came. When I arrived here, I had seen my father for the first time at the airport in January of 1951. Wasn't here two weeks when Dad said, you've got to go to school. And uh, literally, I didn't know a word of English. I had just arrived and uh, we went to Neville High School. At that time, they had classes from the seventh grade through the twelfth grade. Of course, that's changed now. But Paul Neal said that, uh, Principal Paul Neal said that I would probably have to take two English courses and a math course uh, in the morning. And then Dad decided to put me with a private tutor from one to three in the afternoon. So I did that. I took two English courses. By the way, I went to a lot of movies uh, so that I would be able to pick up language by listening. I was literally there every day with four theaters in Monroe. I went to them every afternoon after school. In August, when we started the eighth grade, they tell me I had literally picked up the English language and I was graded just like anybody, any other student and uh, had to take the exams and went on and passed the eighth grade, ninth, finished Neville High School in 1956. Then I went on to Northeast Louisiana University at that time and majored in government, got a degree in four years and uh, graduated in 1960. I then was accepted at Tulane University Law School and I went there from 60 and graduated in 63. Didn't want to be drafted, so I volunteered and served six months active duty with the National Guard. And uh, then I continued on the weekend drills till I completed six years. And uh, before I got out of, after I got out of Fort Polk, I met my wife at Grace Episcopal Church. And I've been married for 51 years. We had four children were three are girls, one is a boy. We have eight grandchildren. And so we're very, very blessed. When I got out of uh, law school, I started uh, six months with the law firm of Parkinson and Crow. 
And in the meantime, John McKinley, who had applied to work for the law firm, I applied three or four places, and he was one of them, called me and said, would you mind coming over for, you know, just chit chat? And I did, and he said that he would be willing to give me a job if I was interested. And at that time, it was McKith and Mauser and McKinley, you know, and I could see stars in the sky with a governor of our state and a, a Mauser, a, a fine gentleman and an expert, a real trial lawyer, and McKinley. And I said, well, you know, why not? I'll be glad to accept your offer. I worked there for nine years, and uh, Donald Brown was there, and eventually David Erskine was hired. Uh, that was 1974, after I started in 65, 1974, the three of us left the law firm and formed our own firm at 1216 Stubbs, Monroe, Louisiana. I looked at my law partners, we had a chit chat, and I said, you know, this could be a win-win situation. I could print up some cards and hand out cards and shake people's hands and help us maybe advertise the law firm in a way. And, and as I told you before, maybe the worst thing happened, I was elected to office in 1976 as a state representative. And after that, I continued to practice law because as a state representative, we're in Baton Rouge three months out of the year in a regular session, two months in a short fiscal session. So uh, I ran again in 79. I was opposed by one person. I got 81% of the votes to 29% of his. And after that, for the next four terms, I was unopposed. So I served almost 24 years in the House of Representatives. In fact, I was really blessed and honored in 1988 when Buddy Roman was elected governor that he asked me if I would be interested in running for speaker, being speaker of the House. Um, as, as a speaker, we would meet routinely with uh, Buddy Roman's counsel, chief counsel, uh, and three or four of the committee members uh, executive committee members to go over bills to see which bills we would be able to support, which bills we would be uh, in opposition to. And we did that pretty much after lunch every day before we convened in the House at 3 o'clock. With all the governors that I've served under, beginning with Edwin Edwards, David Treen, Edwards again, Buddy Romer, Edwards again, <laughs> three terms, and then Mike Foster. Every one of the governors uh, looked at me as a, somebody able to accomplish things and compromise and get things done. So whenever we had conference committees of six people, they invariably picked me as one of them, three from the House, three from the Senate, to work out the differences between legislation that was passed by the Senate and the House and went to a conference committee. To, so I feel like that, that was an accomplishment there in itself. My decision to run for judge was based on many things. Uh, I wanted to finish out a political career on a high note. Judges are always perceived as somewhat better in status than a state representative or a senator. And for that was one reason. Second reason was my neighbor, Bob Costelco, was the district judge in Division A, and he just got elected to the Court of Appeal. I think maybe without opposition. And that left a vacancy in Division A. And so I said, why not try for it? And uh, lo and behold, I qualified the first day, Wednesday, Thursday went by, Friday, almost went by. At five minutes to five, I got a call from the clerk of court and said, Jim, I'm sorry, but you got opposition. <laughs> so there was one opponent. And uh, luckily, I was able to prevail and won the election. I've traveled, you know, I went to uh, Rome with the Bar Association in 1990 and 
because of uh, Bishop Hannah, I think he's deceased now out of New Orleans, he set up to where Chief Justice Caligaro, his son, my wife and I would sit at the front row and get to meet the Pope, Pope John Paul. That was highlight of that meeting of the Louisiana State Bar Association, my meeting the Pope. Well, number one, I would have been 70 before the next term, and you can't in Louisiana run for 70. Now they changed that so that if you're elected at 68, you can finish your term. But after you've reached the age of 70, you cannot continue to run for office. Number two, I had 32 years in state government. The last two years of my service, they were not even holding out retirement benefits. <laughs> so the law partners at my office at 1216 stuff said, come on back, we need you. We got plenty of work to do and we'd love to have you back. And so that's what I did. As a public servant that cared for the people's needs that I would see, try to help them, try to handle their needs. And I hope that I'm remembered in good light. <laughs>